1861, April, Civil War begins. Kentucky declares neutrality initially, but after the Confederate invasion in September, rem remains a Union state. Louisville becomes a major center for the Union Army. August 1st is the founding of the United Brothers of Friendship in Louisville, a black fraternal order. 1863, uh, January 1st, the Emancipation Proclamation frees enslaved African Americans in Confederate territory, but it does not affect slavery in Kentucky and other Union slave states. 1864, over 100 African Americans enlist in the Union Army each day at the Taylor Barracks near 3rd and Oak Streets in Louisville. The 107th, 108th, 109th, 122nd, 123rd, and 125th regiments of the U.S. Colored Infantry are formed in Louisville. The families of African American soldiers are housed in a refugee camp on the outskirts of the city at 18th and Broadway. Soldiers' Aid Societies are organized in local black churches. African Americans in New Albany, Indiana established the hospital de Afrique to care for black soldiers. Commanding General Ulysses S. Grant meets General William Tecumseh Sherman in Louisville to plan the last campaigns of the war. 1850, uh, 1865, April, the Civil War ends. Abraham Lincoln's assassinated. More than 24,000 Kentucky African Americans serve in the Union Army. So 24,000 Kentucky African Americans, 24,000 Kentucky African Americans served in the Union Army. Louisville African Americans hold massive celebrations in the summer, although slavery has not yet ended in Kentucky. December 18th, the 13th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution is declared ratified. So Lincoln was able to get his 13th Amendment to the Constitution eventually passed after he was dead. April, December 18th, slavery is finally outlawed in all the states. So the 13th Amendment outlawed slavery. 1866, January. Because of widespread violence against African Americans, General Clinton B. Fisk places Kentucky under the jurisdiction of the Freedmen's Bureau. And uh, W.B. Du Bois said the Freedmen's Bureau was a great example for democracy. So the Freedmen's Bureau. By September, a branch of the Freedmen's Saving and Trust Company opens in Louisville. The General Assembly revises the 1798 Slave Code to create a subordinate legal status for African Americans and lay the foundation for legal segregation. 1868, April. Eli Normal School, named for General John Eli, E-A-L-Y, Kentucky Superintendent of the Freedmen's Bureau, uh, opens it's Eli, Eli, Ely, John Ely, I don't know, opens in Louisville, sponsored by the Freedmen's Bureau and the American Missionary Association. The Freedmen's Bureau was the one that protected the newly freedmen, the new Africans who were just freed. Um, they provided them food and clothing and also uh, made sure that they had justice in the courts and they got some land too. And they helped a lot of poor people, not just black folks, mostly black folks, but. Uh, July 1868, the 14th Amendment was ratified, guaranteeing black citizenship and civil rights. So the 14th Amendment's passed. Uh, black people get citizenship and civil rights. So I don't, 68, they get civil rights. Why do we, we have to pass another civil rights in 64, 1964, 100 years later? How many times have we got to pass civil rights before black people actually get civil rights? I think we passed like five civil rights acts. I feel like passing these acts are, it's not really working. 1869, Nathaniel R. Harper arrives in Louisville and becomes the first licensed African-American attorney in Kentucky. Statewide black convention is held in Louisville to petition for public schools and civil rights. 1870, the 15th Amendment is ratified, then guaranteeing black suffrage, uh, guaranteeing black male suffrage. Freedom rides from Quinn Chapel protest segregation on streetcars. October the first public schools for African-Americans opens in Louisville. 1870, so first time schools were open for black folks was in 1870 in Louisville. 1872, 1872, African Americans are permitted to testify in court in Kentucky. Dr. Henry Fitz Butler arrives in Louisville, becomes the first licensed black physician in Kentucky. 1873, United Brothers of Friendship receives its official charter from the state and grows rapidly into a national fraternal organization. In 1876, the Sisters of the Mysterious Ten is added as a ladies' lodge. October Colored Central School opens at 6th and Kentucky Street. 1874, Eastern Colored School opens in Smoketown.
1882, the U.S. Circuit Court rules in Commonwealth of Kentucky versus Jesse Ellis that state funds collected for educational purposes must be equally distributed among white and black schools. It's 1882. Frederick Douglass meets in Louisville in 1883. National Convention of the Negro Business League headed by Booker T. Washington meets in Louisville in 1902. In May, Jimmy Winkfield wins the Kentucky Derby, and he's the last black jockey to do so. So 1902 is the last black uh, jockey to win the Kentucky Derby. 1904 is when the Day Law was passed. So in 1904, the Day Law was passed, which uh, segregated all higher education in Kentucky at Berea College, specifically for Berea College. Berea College was founded by John G. Fee. And it was going to be an integrationist college, but the day law in 1904 was passed by the legislature in Kentucky, and it segregated all higher education. 1908, the Western Branch Library opens at 10th and Chestnut Streets, the first Carnegie Endowed Library for African Americans in the United States, with Thomas F. Blue as the head librarian. 100 other stuff happens. Pretty detailed timeline. It's pretty much getting one decade per per page. Led by Lyman T. Johnson. There's a Lyman T. Johnson Middle School here in Louisville. The Louisville NAACP presses for the desegregation of training opportunities for physicians and nurses and for access to Louisville hospitals and the Louisville Free Public Library. The Supreme Court rules in Shelley v. Kramer that residential restrictive covenants are unenforceable. 1949, March, Lyman T. Johnson case leads to the desegregation of graduate education at the University of Kentucky, local NAACP initiates campaign to desegregate de uh, the University of Louisville. So, University of Kentucky desegregates first in 1949. 1950, in April, the day law is amended to permit desegregation of higher education. The trustees of the University of Louisville vote to desegregate that institution in 1950 to 1951 and a closed Louisville Municipal College. 1951, Dr. Charles H. Parrish, Jr. becomes the first black faculty member on the main campus of the University of Louisville and the first African-American appointed to the faculty of a historically white institution in the South. 1952, desegregation of the neighborhood branch libraries happens in Louisville. In 1954, Ann and Carl Braden, a white couple, purchase a house in Shively. It's a segregated Louisville suburb, and then they sell it to an African-American couple, Charlotte and Andrew Wade. After the Wades take possession, racial harassment begins, and within a few weeks, part of the house is destroyed by a bomb. So the Bradens help a black couple buy a house, and then it's bombed a few weeks later. Ironically, rather than pursue the bombers, local authorities arrest Carl and Ann Braden, uh, and they charge them with sedition. And uh, conspiracy it's a communist conspiracy they meant to you know bring the black couple in so they would get bombed so that way they can institute communism in Louisville that was like their plan right so that's what they were tried with in Shively there's in Shively which was a segregated Louisville suburb in 1955 the desegregation of Louisville parks in 1956 the desegregation of the of Louisville public schools in 1957 the Lyman T Johnson not the, yeah, the Lyman T. Johnson. He leads the NAACP Youth Council in Louisville in drugstore sit-ins. So he was getting a lot of young folks to sit in drugstores in 1957. It was 50 or so years ago. The Sixth Circuit Court of Appeals orders the Louisville Municipal Housing Commission to desegregate its public housing projects. 
Woodford R. Porter, senior owner of a local funeral home, is elected to the Louisville Board of Education in 1958. 1962 is the establishment of the Louisville Human Relations Commission. 1964, February 25th, you have Muhammad Ali who defeats Sonny Liston and he becomes the heavyweight boxing champion of the world. A day later, he declares he's joined the Nation of Islam and that he's changed his name to Muhammad Ali. March on Frankfurt, led by Martin Luther King Jr. and Jackie Robinson, uh, to lobby for a state civil rights bill happened in 1964. So in 1964, MLK was in Frankfurt. 1964, MLK was here in the bluegrass. And he got what he wanted, the pinnacle of the civil rights era for Kentucky happened in 1966 when the Kentucky Civil Rights Act become law. MLK said it was the most progressive, most sweeping law in the whole country, 1966. So Kentucky's got a lot of countercurrents, mostly racist, but there's Muhammad Ali and there's a 1966 Civil Rights Act. And Ashley Judd and Hunter S. Thompson, George Clooney and uh, Johnny Depp and uh, <laughs> Lyman T. Johnson and uh, J. Blaine Hudson and uh, you know a bunch of folks. So in March of 1966, the open housing movement begins and it continues through the end of 1967. 1967, Muhammad Ali refuses the induction into the army and is stripped of his heavyweight title. Georgia Davis Powers of Louisville becomes the first woman and the first African American elected to the Kentucky Senate. Uh, December 13th, open housing ordinance passes. 1968, May 27th, the 29th, the Louisville riot, after which the Black Six are arrested and charged with conspiracy. They're later tried and acquitted in 1970. 1969, April 30th, May 1st. April 30th and May 1st, the Black Student Union demonstrations at the University of Louisville led to the creation of the Office of Black Affairs, the first black studies courses, and special scholarship and support programs for African American students, which was brought on by J. Blaine Hudson and Gerald Neal and uh, several other uh, black folks, uh, black student union folks. I got a picture in here. So, that was uh, 1969. The Louisville of, the University of Louisville enters the state system of higher education in 1970. So Louisville's been in the state system for only 42 years. So it's only been a state school for 42 years. U University of Louisville's a baby. It's only 42 years old. 1971, Muhammad Ali's boxing license is restored after an eight to zero decision in his favor by the U.S. Supreme Court. Pan-African Studies becomes an academic department at UofL in 1973. Anti-busing demonstrations and riots rock Louisville and Jefferson County in response to the federal court-ordered integration of the newly merged school system. That's 1975. And uh, Jay Blaine Hudson called it a mini-civil war. So there's a mini civil war here in Louisville in 1975. That's the reason why there's so many white supremacists who still exist in Louisville. In 1988, Gerald Neal is elected to the Kentucky Senate, seceding Georgia Davis Power. So Gerald A. Neal is the first African American man to become state senator in 1988 and that was uh, Georgia Davis Powers was the first uh, senator in the state of Kentucky which I'm not sure when controversy erupts in 1990 when the University of Louisville elects to play in the Fiesta Bowl in Arizona after Arizona refused to support the Martin Luther King holiday Arizona didn't want to fucking support Martin Luther King's holiday. Oh my God. 2003, January 6th, Robert White becomes Louisville's first African-American chief of police. February 20th, groundbreaking for the Kentucky Center for African-American Heritage at 18th and Muhammad Ali Boulevard.
1999, May 13th, Desmond Rudolph is fatally shot by police officers who said he was attempted to run over them in an alley with a stolen vehicle. Rudolph was unarmed and was shot at least 10 times. Protest by the Reverend Lewis Coleman Jr. and others at the Valhalla Golf Club Force, the PGA to expand the role of minorities in the sport nationwide.